Welcome to NASDAQ Trade Talks. I'm Jill Malandrino, Global Markets Reporter. Welcome to NASDAQ Trade Talks. I'm Jill Malandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ. Joining me at the market site in Times Square, New York City, we have Chris Dearborn. He's the Managing Director on NASDAQ's Market Intelligence Desk. With our midday update, and the story for today is stocks down, yields down. It's been uh, definitely a different story than the NASDAQ 100, all the other major averages hitting fresh all-time highs on Wednesday. Absolutely. It is definitely a risk-off Friday in the equity markets. And the fear of a global economic slowdown is kind of hitting the tape today. You know, away from the expiration Friday, which today with the options expiring, adding a little volume to it. Vo trading volume has been good all week. Yesterday was over 8.4 billion tape. The all-time highs with the S&P, the NASDAQ 100, and the composite on Wednesday were 7.5 billion. Volume's good. Trading is liquid. The markets are just taking in a little bit here because you have that rise in coronavirus. So again, a little economic data as well, which wasn't as strong as hoped for, is all kind of boiling into this pot right now. And what we're looking at is lower equities, lower yields, higher gold, higher dollar. Yep, gold at a seven-year high. Let's take a look yep. at our first chart of the day, and this is the S&P 500. And I think when, um, before we can get into the technicals mm -hmm. with it, the, the concerns with the coronavirus clearly have to do with the supply chain, right? Yes. You, you're looking at a couple of quarters where there's going to be an impact from that. But you and I were talking about this earlier, conferences have been canceled, right? So that's going to impact travel. But what about the restaurants? What about the service workers? Um, that's you know, GDP is 70% of consumer spend. Right. If they're not making money, that's a concern. And I think part of that is playing into it also. The overarching theme for the last month has been that this will be a limited impact to the global economy. Specifically, what you're looking at here is maybe that might be extended a little bit here. We don't know. Again, investors don't like the unknown. That's why you're seeing a flood into other assets. But again, into the equity markets, you're still seeing money flow into there because the equity markets are getting yield. With the Fed essentially out of the way and the Fed speakers are all on the circuit today they're speaking here in new york they're on a number of different networks and everything else they're saying everything's coming along just fine and what they're looking at there is the input factors that we're going to see a lot of next week that are going to go towards first uh, look at gdp for q4 now the question is what is q1 gdp going to be looking at you're still looking at record low unemployment you're still looking at wage growth year over year month over month you're still looking at a number of companies still saying, you know what, the coronavirus is going to be a minimal impact for Q1, especially with a lot of supply chain there. Mm -hmm. Services industry, however, will be the tell. That's going to be the first one to go. And if you start to see talk of layoffs, suspensions, that's going to be a sign that this has growing legs and more fear. Investors don't like fear. That's why you're seeing the flight to save havens. Right. And, you know, an example today. Look at Chinese car sales that came out down 93% for the last month. It makes total sense, right? People are quarantined at home. You can't go out, you're not buying cars. What if that goes two months, three months, four months? Or what if it's just a blip and it's, you know, all of a sudden there's some vaccines that come on the market two months down the road that are going to help prevent this spread? Again, unknown factors do not play well for investments. Yeah, and, that, and that's really my concern, going back to what I was saying before, mm -hmm. when it comes to the consumer and because of the contribution they have to the economy, and really the, the story with the market last year was the strength in consumer. Right. And, and yes, we are almost at record employment, but a lot of those jobs that have been created are in the services industry, and I'm not trying to sound all doom and gloom, you know, mm -hmm. one day is not a market make. Correct. But that's just my concern, and that's why I think when we look at the trading week ahead, and we have consumer confidence, and we have GDP, mm -hmm. as you had mentioned. Let's move it to the technicals, though. Right. What is the chart saying? So oh, let's go back to the chart. So the S&P 500. 500 on this chart, we're coming into a very significant support level. The 3,300 level has been a major breakout area for the S&P. This is a one-year chart we're looking at. It's still holding support. A sell-off today is nice. You know, I th like to see movements both up and down, a little bit of chop into the market, give opportunity for people to take profits as well as people to get entry. This 3,300 level should hold, and if it doesn't, we're gonna go to 3,234. The near-term factors that are gonna be impacting this are the fear of the coronavirus, the yields on the 10 and 30 year, gold, and where other folks are gonna be unwinding equity assets and putting it into, hoping to get ahead of the game if something does happen into those safe haven assets. So if 3,300, that's not what we're testing it right now, we're at 3,331, we're down 1.25% on the marketplace. You know, what's interesting here is all the support lines have held for the most part for the last three years in the, in the equities. Is there any reason to think that this won't hold? Yes, but 
again, is this a one-off item, the coronavirus? It's not really a black swan event, but it could turn into something a little bit more. Again, going to the consumer names. A lot of the S&P is heavy with tech, again, sourcing out of China. You're looking at car manufacturers, again, significant footprint in China. You're looking at retailers. You know, Lululemon came out today, Coke came out today, saying that, you know, yes, it'll impact, but it'll only be incremental. And Coke, as a matter of fact, said they're looking to hit their numbers for the full year. So are we being misled? Or is it just, again, coming back to you, we don't know. Yeah. I think that's what it is. Look for this to hold at 3337 on a closing basis over the next couple of days. If it fails three days in a row, we're going to the 3234 level. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how the earnings reaction is going to be over the next quarter or two. I would imagine analysts are going to fall in line and take their estimates down on the earnings and revenue side for sure. Mm -hmm. So even if it's um, a meat or a small beat, what's that going to do to asset prices? So I think it's going to be interesting over the next couple quarters. It's all into the forecast. It's all into the forecast. What are we guiding forward? for the full year. And I mean, there's an earning bonanza coming out next week on the retail and consumer side, right? You've got Home Depot, Macy's, Lowe's, Smuckers, TJ, Hostess, Best Buy, Baidu, great look into yep. what's going there, Monster, Booking.com, again, right into the travel play. How is this playing out and what's the guidance gonna be? Depending on what they say, could absolutely impact this index because all of those companies are members of the S&P 500. All right, let's wrap it up with our last chart here. We're taking a look at the uh, 30, 30 year US Treasury. Right. No surprise to see the yields tanking. In all time, we hit an all time low. What's interesting, the, the, so this is the yield. So bonds and stocks move inversely, right? The yield uh, moves with the bond price moving up. So what you're looking at is seasoned demand, unseasoned demand uns for the 30 year. The 10 year looks very similar as well, making an all time low here in the 30 year at 188. What's interesting, this corresponds exactly with the low point of the day, about midpoint this morning, that the S&P made for the low of the day as well. So what you're looking here is an asset swap. People are buying bonds and rolling out of the larger cap equities, which is interesting. So question is, what is the divergence going on here? Is it something that can be ignored and accredited to a one day fear? Or are we looking at something with bigger legs? The 30 years rally back a little bit to 1.91%. Look for it to hold 1.904, which is the all-time closing low for the 30 year. If it holds above that and the uh, news comes out over the weekend, you can see some unwinding of the treasuries here. But again, the 30 year, the 10 year are both corresponding directly with the S&P 500 in the markets. All right, Chris, as always, yep. thanks so much for joining us on Trade Talks. And thanks for joining me. I'm Jill Malandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ.